Yonging Valley Science and Letters Academy. It has been 83 school days since our last prank. During morning break on April 1st, the terrible two stood in the basement of Yonging Valley Science and Letters Academy. Miles had a lunch bag so heavy he held it from the bottom. Miles carried a small cage that once belonged to his hamster, which escaped and had vanished when he was in second grade. In front of them was a large red door with peeling paint and block letters, mechanical room. For now, at least, the coast was clear. Miles had had a mixture of sour cream, raw eggs, and pea soup the night before. He brought it to school and poured it on the playground by the swings at the beginning of recess. Gus had emerged with a bag of sawdust in a broom. Phase one. Fake vomit was complete. They had at least seven minutes before Gus returned. It was time to initiate phase two. Niles produced an enormous ring from his pocket. The copied master set of keys was the crowning accomplishment of his stint as school helper. They may take my sash, but they'll never take my keys, he said. He began trying keys one by one, fitting each other into the lock and giving it a little wiggle. Nope. Nope. Yep. The mechanical room was vast and dusty. It smelled of oil. The air was old. It hung above them and tasted stale in their mouths. Nobody but Gus had breathed in here for the last 30 years. The room was still and mostly quiet. Occasionally, there was a clang or rumble. Two hot water tanks towered like sin trees by the door. Pipes of many sizes crisscross. Overhead, on the back wall, a row of circuits twinkled. In the middle of the room was a great metal block. That was it, the furnace. The boys approached with something like reverence. The furnace was taller than they were and ran half the length of the room. Niles ran his hand against the metal and was surprised to find it was cool. Somewhere within this machine was an infernal blaze that pumped heat to the school's 22 classrooms. Niles pulled out some diagrams he copied from a book at the library. Okay, he said, well, I thought this would make more sense when we were in the room. Miles looked over Niles' shoulder, then at the furnace. I think it actually makes less sense now that we're in the room. Yeah, said Niles. That might be true. They stared at the diagrams for a few more seconds. Well, said Niles, I guess you should look for this lever. They slowly walked around the first. They slowly 
slowly walked around the furnace in opposite directions. Hey, said Miles, is that it? He was pointing at a recessed lever at the head of the machine. Miles checked it against the diagram. Yeah, I think it is. You think? I mean, it is. What if I pulled this and the whole thing explodes, said Miles. I don't think that's really how furnaces work, said Miles. Yeah, said Miles. It would be cool, though. Miles pulled down on the lever, and an inspection panel swung open, revealing a wall of buttons, tubes, and wires. Niles could now hear a muffled roar, and through a little round window down near the ground, Niles could make out the flicker of an orange flame. All right, he said, we're almost in. We just open the little panel, and then it's go time. Ready the vessel, said Miles. Niles put the hamster cage on the ground. Vessel is ready, said Niles. Apply protective gear, layer one. They clipped wooden clothespins to their noses. Pour the cheese, said Niles. Pouring the cheese said Miles. He dumped four pounds of Limburger into the cage. Apply protective gear, layer two. The terrible two dome safety goggles and oven mitts. Let's go. Miles pulled a small lever and a panel the size of an oven door swung open. The roar of the furnace was loud now and hot air blasted their faces and blew back their hair. Niles studied the coils in front of him, which snaked up to a metal grate. That's it, the air handler. Niles placed the cage on top of the grate. He checked their handiwork against a drawing he made himself. We good? Miles asked. We're good, Niles said. The soft cheese had already began to melt, running goopily on the cage's metal bottom. It occurred to Niles that he had not yet smelled Limburger cheese. He removed his clothespin just for a second. It was worse than he thought. The bell rang. Happy April Fool's Day, said Miles. Happy April Fool's Day, said Miles. And that is the end of chapter 19.